Yeah, we've got our control arms which form the look after your re advance and rewind and your shutter release and film lock. They've got to be cleaned. Right, first the fixing post, the spacing washers, you have two washers, this piece blocks the shutter release from, well actually the shutter release when it hits that it unlocks the film advance, this piece blocks the shutter release from releasing until it's ready and this piece forms the ratchet click 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 that you hear when you're winding on film and that is the rewind that when that's lifted out of the way it allows you to rewind the film so starting with the assembly The washer with the small hole goes on there. Then goes the rewind. Then goes the washer with the large hole. Then goes this lever, then goes that lever, and then we have the fixing screw. So you have to get the screw through all of those components and into the threaded hole all at the same time without disturbing things and sometimes it goes smoothly and other times it does not you can just feel that that's catching on the larger of the two washers that's right now that's good there that's down i can do that screw up and the disposition of the springs well the spring at the rear has to be pulled out. You can pull it out underneath that rewind arm and then back and up into place here. You can see that's under tension there from that spring. That's correct. The spring at the front, we don't fit that yet because that is fitted with the shutter release. Um, now I think we can probably do that second. Let's just do these two pieces. This is our advanced rewind lever and a screw that holds it down in place, which was very tight. That's that left-handed threaded piece. And I'm just cleaning this. There's a bit of a mark there. I'm not sure what, whether that's lost a bit of chroming here yeah, it looks like it has it's okay I'm looking at this this has has to have some drag so basically that's achieved by this arm and that arm being bent up very slightly just to provide some friction and that's so that the advanced and rewind lever sits where it was left effectively it doesn't just flap backwards and forward in the breeze I'll just give that a little touch of molybdenum there not that it really requires much at all 
and that should drop into place right here the screw goes here and that's left hand threaded so that's lefty tighty checking that that's centered that's better you can see this is the advanced position at that position you can't um, move your film spool backwards it's blocked by this ratchet arm if we put it in the rewind position it lifts the ratchet arm out of position and then the film spool can be rotated I'll tighten that screw so I'll put my spanner in here get it on top of the on the boss and this didn't need to be anywhere near as tight as it was last time so I'll just tighten it down with a pair of tweezers there that's more than adequate and when you would if that's in the rewind position you can see that as soon as I'm going to advance the let's put the advance knob on temporarily if this is in the rewind position there you can roll your film back as soon as you move the film advance knob into the advanced position you'll see that the rewind lever swings back to the advanced position that happens instantly and that's because of you, the friction that you have from those slightly bent up tabs on that lever so that's all good the shutter release is next so I have to clean and put that into position To get the shutter to release smoothly you need to have the lubricant in the right places here some grease we'll be using the molybdenum paste that's good so the areas I'm most concerned with are here because that's where it contacts a lever up in the camera in the center so that it revolves it moves smoothly on the shaft that it goes on to in the middle of this hole here that's a guide pin sits there and you need that to run smoothly and normally I just put a wipe here and here Now, yeah. to get this in place we have to get the spring correctly seated and the spring I'm talking about is this one at the front and it has to hook under a stud you can see the top of the rivet there it has to hook into a stud underneath this un on the underside of that so we have to push it down under there so it's entertaining as all these things are I'm just attempting to push it there with the tip of a screwdriver and of course the spring wants to catch on that edge of that hole and not move alright pull this back out and show you what I was intending to show you earlier This spring 
I was able to get that tucked down underneath there and I've just untucked it just to uh, make life awkward. But my camera stopped recording. Let me redo that again. Get that spring in place. Carry it through underneath that rivet. And I should be able to pop it up on the other side. That's it. So this spring is pulling this arm forward. Okay, well I'd run into a file size limit there. Um, very annoying, I've certainly had that before, but basically I think I was at the stage where I was going to fit this shutter release. Um, so we'll just pop it back out and I'll show you how it fits in place. And I'm back out of the way. Right. So this piece. Lubrication. In the centre. In this piece here particularly. And in that hole right there. Where that goes on the guide. And this can drop into place. I'll just push that arm back out of the way. That goes onto the shaft. Over there. Roll the film sprocket forward, hold it there, and the shutter releases nicely. To make sure it runs smoothly and releases smoothly, I take some molybdenum paste and run it on that sloped surface there. That's where the shutter release comes down, pushes that arm across. which pulls this cam out of contact with the wheel and allows you to wind on again. Right, to continue on with this, reassembling this camera, we can pop this shield back in place. It just drops down over that screw. We can pop the arm on here, it carries the frame counter adjuster, it's held in place with a shouldered screw. sure that's firmly in place. Snip that screw up. The adjuster for the frame counter is there. I'll just give that a wipe with some solvent to uh, clean it. I'll pop a smear of molybdenum in there and not much more than that. The wheel pops on the top there. Now there's a spring that pushes that back towards the back of the camera and that's here. I'll get that round the right way. It's got one longer arm and one shorter arm. Pop, pop the shorter arm through underneath for the moment. Get this over the post. So that spring bears against that arm at that point and hooks around the groove in this mounting screw there. So this is quite strongly sprung loaded.
and at the moment that's about as far as we can go with doing the body on here the next task will be to clean up the top housing get that prepared for installation and then I will clean and service the rangefinder uh, the shutter will be serviced separately and finally we'll come back together install the rangefinder on the body close the, the camera itself up at that stage then refit the shutter and the job will be virtually finished so I can see one last little task which we'll deal with last of all so next to start cleaning up that top cover I'm having a quick look at this to see what sort of a state it's in it's a little bit dusty um, certainly doesn't show much wear a couple of marks on the shoe which are, would be fairly normal and that'll just be where somebody has slid something in there that was had something on it some feature that scratched that surface this satin chrome is extremely easy to mark uh, it's nowhere near as durable as a bright chrome would be and so if you run something sharp across it it'll scratch it those scratches are there practically forever now I'll remove this frame counter the frame counter is sprung loaded there's a spring that holds it down and you can pull up against it and you can rotate it and this will drop down into various positions and you can use it to remind you what film you have in the camera that's the only function it serves I get emails from people very concerned to know what they should set that to for their film which because of course most of these films are not still made and I have to reassure them that that's nothing it's just a reminder to tell you what film you've got in the camera it's of no consequence at all whether you set it or don't set it it changes no setting inside the camera and is a superfluous feature for most people so here I'm going to remove this frame which holds the glass in for the front viewfinder and rangefinder windows there's simply two screws there and I'm doing this solely because it's easier to do a good job of cleaning that those glass pieces when they are out of the top cover so you can do a fairly good job while they're still there and you may see I don't know whether you'd see there I can see a dirty line around there where it's been against the body and similarly there also that glass has a bit of a, a funny colored tinge around the outside whether that's a grease oils that have accumulated I don't know I have to find a tool for doing that back in a second all right well that gave me the opportunity to change the battery in the camera because it was starting to grizzle that it was uh, partly flat so this is screwed into the top of the housing now there's a few ways you can get it loose I'll try with the end of a steel rule and yes it comes free straight away that's good because it means I don't have to use any other tool and because it came free easily I didn't have to apply a lot of force because when you have to apply a lot of force there's always a danger you'll slip and if you slip there's always a danger that whichever sharp tool you're holding in your hand will scour the top of the camera make some terrible mark and everyone will think you're a butcher okay so now I've got everything off that top cover the only thing of interest left in the top cover is the glass for the rear viewfinder eyepiece and we can clean that in place these components will just need to be cleaned and then that can be reassembled I see that's got two springs in it that's a bit unusual 
normally one suffices. They look very thin, so perhaps they only had thin material to make them from. Alright, well I can get on to cleaning up that stuff I suppose. So, a bit of solvent on a cotton bud. And we'll wipe that top surface clean. You can see most of those marks lifted straight off. So they're just staining from uh, dirt, finger grease, that sort of thing. And I'll run around that back face in a similar fashion. And there's quite a bit of dirt coming off there. And the front face. And that end. Right, we'll do this end of the housing where the frame counter and the release sit and the advance knob. Start with a fresh tip, fresh cotton bud. Wipe over it again to pick up anything else that we loosened and didn't remove. And then wipe the inside. This is very clean, uh, hardly anything to see there. I'll wipe around those inside of those finder windows to pick up any dirt. And that's the top cover clean. I'll do the same for the accessory chute. While I'm cleaning it, I'm looking to see if there's any distortion from something big having been forced in there, but that looks quite good. I'll clean the frame. Again, I'm just lifting out any oil or grease stains that might be on there, and any dust. We'll wipe around the film reminder components, the retaining screw, the re springs, in this case there are two, normally I'd only expect to find one, and the dial itself. And that's the underside of the dial you see there, with all its little detent holes which drop over that short peg on the top cover as it's rotated into position. Now the chroming on this particular component must have been done fairly a fairly thin coat. Often they show corrosion. Um, this one's in quite a good state, but I'm just checking it closely to see how it looks. So we can pop a few of these pieces back and then I'll clean that glass viewfinder lens. So I take our three chrome screws. Pop the accessory shoe back on. As usual, just get to run the screws in first. Tighten them up once they're all in place. don't need to go mad tightening them up but that's a matter of feel you, you learn that from practice uh, it's not something you can really easily teach so I'll put a little smear of grease on the base of this ring And our springs, I will likewise give them a quick wipe. And they require no more than that. They should stack up. They do. 
and drop into the groove down here and that piece should in theory just screw back into the top of the camera and I'm just checking that I haven't make sure I've got that started correctly that's good and I use the end of my rule to drive that to taking that very slowly to just check that those springs seated correctly and weren't sitting out of place that feels good I'll tighten that up that's our film reminder dial and you can just lift it against its spring and you can rotate it to the next position So we'll set it to 21 DIN, which is ISO or ASA 100 from memory. That's fine. So now I've found some glass cleaner and we can clean the glass components here and pop those into place. Well, I'll start with a fresh piece of paper here since we're cleaning glass. So a tiny bit of glass cleaner on a cotton bud and I'm going to do the rear eyepiece glass first do the outside and then do the inside by swinging it, twisting it backwards and forwards you can get quite good cover on that glass and then of course cleaning it off with the, the dry tip I'm checking that glass now carefully to see that it is clean I haven't left any smears on it and that's all good and we have our two front glasses I carefully clean both surfaces the outside surface of course is normally the dirtiest I'll check those against the light they look good here's our frame and the two screws now the glass pieces sometimes these have a bevel on the edge of them where a pronounced bevel exists that's to go into the top corner here these ones look plain so that's not an issue so this is to fit up into the top like this so I can put my viewfinder glass in position on this frame balance that on the tip of my finger slide it into position in the camera there are two screw holes visible in the top there so I'll get my screws started
just nip those up, I haven't tightened them and I'm checking to see that the glass is sitting in the frame correctly that it hasn't slid down too far it looks like that's a bit better I'll loosen those screws off and push the frame firmly against the top that looks good check again that it all looks good and I'll nip those screws up tight taking a blower I will just blow each of those pieces of glass in turn and inspect them under the light to make sure they're good and I can see a slight fingerprint or it looks like a fingerprint on that smaller piece of glass so I must have touched that while I was getting that installed I think it's on the outside surface, so I'll just clean that again and see what I see. It certainly was, and that's all it was. And there's a speck of dust there. Yes, that's that's good. And the rear, the eyepiece glass looks good too. So that that top cover is ready to go back on the camera. So I can pop that to one side now. What else have we got to deal with? Oh, we could prepare the frame counter. We'll go back to our dirtier piece of paper. The frame counter. The frame counter, as I said earlier, is there's three pieces involved in this. A spring. And two other components. I'll just go over these with a solvent on a cotton bud so I can see some old grease there there's a dial with the numbers the spring which looks very clean and this component which is driven by the gear inside the camera and couples to the piece with the numbers on with some friction so that you can set it and it'll stay where it's been put but it doesn't need to be loose it needs to be quite stiff so I'll put some grease on the inside of that that slides on there so that's the long side, the side of the slots that goes towards the chrome And the spring just sits on this bottom face. At the same time, I'll take the, the opportunity to put a tiny smear of grease on the inside edge because that's where it runs on the post. Pop that spring on. Normally it'll sit there by itself. Yeah, it does. So it's sitting there. That's all that's required. And before we put down the top cover, that has to pop back and pop down into place see what else we've got for our top cover that needs to be dealt with we have the advance knob the rewind knob and that collar from the top of the rewind these parts of course go on once the top cover is down in place so all I'm doing now is cleaning them so that they're ready to go Apart from that, those components which I'll put over there, we have the tip of our shutter release button of course, the two chrome screws which hold the top cover in, and the two screws which hold the rangefinder to the top of the camera book chassis. And it's the rangefinder we need to strip down and clean next.